Welcome back. Still with me in the studio, Alison Beck, partner in financial risk management at KPMG. And from our bureau in Cape Town, Johan Skoltz, the head of research at Afri Focus Securities. Talking about this whole LIBOR scandal, um, let's, let's try and sort of bring it home. But before we get there, Alison, you, you, during the break, you were making a point about miscommunication between the Bank of England and Barclays. Yeah, the, the Bank of England is adamant and, and actually Bob Diamond confirmed it, that they actually weren't told to bring down their, their rate that they were quoting. However, there seems to be a bit of miscommunication between what senior management and middle management and they got the view that they were told to sort of keep their head below the parapet, which is, was quoted quite a few times. And they were told to bring their, their pricing down in line with the market, um, which they felt still didn't represent the liquidity crisis and that actually the prices they were having to, to pay. But they did bring their pricing down. Um, Johan, the South African Reserve Bank moved fairly quickly to try and allay fears about any sort of uh, manipulation of, of our local rate. Um, uh, do you do, are you are you happy with what they've come up with? Yeah, you know, I think um, and it and it came across in, 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 in the introductory piece as well, Jeremy, as as a key difference between South Africa and the UK um, in determining these rates are the fact that in the UK it is it is, call it uh, implied or imputed rate um, that they're submitting, um, you know, so it's not a rate that's based on actual trades, whilst the rate that's being submitted in South Africa is a rate that the bank must be prepared to take funding at if, and would, uh, if it were to be required, which is different from, from the situation in the UK, where it is the rate that they feel they would be able to get funding. So there's a, there's a bit more of leeway in, 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 in the instance of the UK um, and you know so there's a, not a di uh, direct correlation between actual trades taking place at that rate and, um, and, 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 and the rate being submitted at the end of the day which opens up the p possibility for, uh, for manipulation. Um, you know and I think the, the, the other thing that to an extent um, gives comfort in the South African uh, environment is that we are to a large extent pretty much a closed system. We've got uh, international banks partaking as well, but we're much more of a closed system than, uh, than, the, than, than the case is in the UK. Um, you know, so I think it, 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 will, it will become very apparent for other partaking banks if, if one particular bank is trying to, to lowball or highball a figure. Before we get on to how it could possibly affect people in, in their real lives, um, you were saying in the first part of the show, Alison, that uh, this, this investigation is, is going all over the place now, from Canada to Switzerland. And, and, yes. uh, um, I remember chatting to a banker a few months ago um, who said that one of the reasons why we were protected or we weren't hit as hard by the whole crisis was that this, our banking system and he mentioned at that time the Canadian banking system um, were very well regulated. Yeah. Um, so is there a possibility of a problem in Canada? I think it's more, it's more the connection of the Canadian banks with the UK banks and how large their trading positions were. Okay. Right, now, let's get on to you and me. Um, how... Okay, obviously the LIBOR one would only affect you if you've uh, if you've got instruments overseas. If you if you as an individual, yes, individual. but South African corporates are affected because they often borrow um, U.S. dollars or euros, and it's then their interest rate is pegged against the LIBOR rate or the Euribor, and so if that's been manipulated, they could be affected. What sort of, uh, Johan, um, I'm going to put mm -hmm. you on a spot here. I mean, what sort of money are we looking at? What, what sort of money is South Africa borrowing on, on those sort of interest rates? No, that's, 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 that's <laughs> a difficult one to answer, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't, got, I haven't got an idea, actually, to be perfectly honest. You know, um, but are we talking it's typically we, your, your, we your larger corporates that would um, issue uh, debt offshore um, you know, your Anglo-Americans, um, 
uh, well, recently we had ITCON obviously coming out and, 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 and uh, reducing their uh, offshore debt exposure and bringing it back to South Africa. So, no, I haven't got the faintest idea, to be perfectly honest, Jeremy. But we must be talking billions. Billions, yeah. Yeah, because not only that, if you look at any of the foreign owned companies here, if they borrow from their parent company or they borrow from offshore, the Reserve Bank rulings and, and the tax side is a, if they borrow dollars, they must borrow at an interest rate linked to dollars, which would usually be LIBOR. So you've got all those foreign companies, if they do borrow from their parent or offshore, that are affected. Is KPMG borrowing anything from their parent company? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. It's all local. <laughs> um, Johan, just to come back to a point you made there that's, that's right off the radar, but I, I'd just like to pick up on it. You were talking about EDCON um, bringing back money. What was the reasoning behind that, do you think? Well, no, I think it's just specifically on, on EDCON's side, you know, that they've been um, uh, overly geared for, 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 for quite some time. And um, I think it's really in preparation for, for future listing. Um, so we saw the situation where EPSA basically took over ETCON's uh, debtors book and uh, the cash that uh, EPSA paid for it allowed ETCON to service part of its uh, uh, debt obligations. Okay, right. So it's just really a restructuring from uh, ETCON's point of view there. Okay, so does this or could this have affected me? Uh, Do I, if I walk down in two months' time when I'm in the UK and I walk down the street and I see Bob Diamond, should I slap him on the back of the head and call <laughs> him a swine? Uh, um, I wouldn't advise it. He'd probably oh. be arrested. But yeah, okay, right. um, I don't think it would affect you as an individual in South Africa. I can't really see the impact on you as a as, as South African. The only area would, be, I mean, you would be affected is if there was f um, manipulation of Jibar and you had surplus cash and you had it in the money market. That, and obviously certain, as you had referred to, the pricing of certain products, but not in terms of LIBOR. It would be, the impact on you would be minimal. Johan, you happy with that answer? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's, it's really minimal, you know, except if you've, if you've got certain investments in, 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 in the UK, yeah. cash sitting in the UK that's being priced off uh, LIBOR there, that's, that's the only real area where I can see a direct impact filtering through to, to the SA consumer. Or you've got banking shares. <laughs> if you've got banking yeah. shares, they've been seriously <laughs> hit. Um, the valuation um, yeah. has been, will it impact you? Well, it's been seriously hit in South Africa as well, actually. Yeah. But nowhere near the discount yeah. or the, the sort of money that's been wiped off from the, from the banking shares in, in the UK. But having said that, um, guys, there must be a fair amount of South Africans who are sitting with property um, and offshore investments, given the Reserve Bank's fairly recent Lax, uh, uh, relaxation of, of, um, of money you can take offshore, there must be a fair amount of South Africans who've got money sitting overseas. They will do, but um, the interest rates are so low overseas, it's, I mean, you're basically not getting any interest on your money sitting overseas, so <laughs> I'm not sure the impact's that significant. But if you're going to have cash or if you're going to have money offshore, you will invest it um, probably in the property market or in, in equities because interest rates are so low. Let's say I'm a South African who's taken my money offshore that I'm, I'm entitled to take offshore and I've invested it in property because the mm -hmm. property market's in, a, in, a, in the doldrums and it's a good time to buy. Would this not affect in some way the interest rate that you are paying if you've geared that property? It, it, it would if your, um, if your reference rate is, is, is LIBOR, but um, you know, typically in the UK uh, it, it, it works broadly similar to South Africa where most mortgages are actually priced off the prime or, 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 or the banking rate um, as opposed to being priced off, um, off, 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 off LIBOR. Um, you know, there's a couple of, uh, I read up on it, there's a couple of mortgages it's priced off, my, uh, I think it's 200,000 or something was the number that quoted mortgages in the UK that's, that's, that's priced off um, LIBOR. So, you know, once again, it's, it's really difficult.
difficult to see the direct impact. And obviously then on, on, on the other end, one has to say that um, the period, the major period that Barclays was being investigated for was for actually putting in rates that were too low as opposed to being too high. So if you were actually gearing up there and you had a, a, a loan priced off LIBOR, you would actually benefit um, as opposed to, 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 to being uh, to your detriment. So basically, both of you are saying at the end of the day, right now, this is not affecting you and me in South Africa. No, unless you, as I say, have banking shares offshore. Yeah, okay. Um, right, well, then I, I want to put something to you, Johan. If that's the case, if it's not really affecting either you or me, you sitting in Cape Town and me sitting in uh, Johannesburg, I want to I pose a, a very sideline and very different question. Why did the Stormers not go for a bonus point win and get to the top of the South African conference and the so top of the Super 15 log. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, Jeremy. I'm a, I'm a cheetah supporter, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but we'll see you. We'll see the weekend. Um, I think the Stormers has got a good opportunity against the Rebels to, um, to get the, finally get four tries in the game. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm going down to Newlands with a couple of my mates, so we'll, we'll see. Have a beer for me. Nice talking to you, Jan. Thank you for your time. And Alison, thank you for joining us in the studio this evening. What we're going to try and look at um, next time around is an interesting phenomenon that's coming to a fore. I wasn't aware of it until um, our producer, Natasha, showed me the figures on peer-to-peer -peer lending. People who are lending money from sources other than banks. And we'll take a good look at that in our next show. Until then, bye-bye.